Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today I'm going to be continuing on with the Mortal Kombat stuff. Um, in addition to the commentaries that I did for the original films, um, I will also be doing some other Mortal Kombat related videos. Um, namely some reviews of some stuff that I haven't gotten to yet. And I figured since the new movie is coming out, might as well talk about the old stuff first uh, before the new one comes out. But before I get into that, if anybody would like to help contribute to the channel by making a donation, or if you want to have a request sent in, I will link my PayPal in the description box for those that are interested in that. Um, let me get the shameless plug out of the way. Um, but today, I'm going to be talking about Mortal Kombat The Journey Begins, which was a direct-to-video animated movie, I guess you could say. It's only 30 minutes. Um, it's, uh, it's not like it's a full-length film, but this was a tie-in for the 1995 film. This came out right before it came out in theaters. Um, and, uh, yeah, not only do I have the VHS, but I also have it on Laserdisc as well. And it is included, for some reason, uh, they included this on the uh, Blu-ray release of the first Mortal Kombat film. Um, why just this and not any other features is beyond me. Now, the cool thing is, after... The feature on both the VHS and the Laserdisc, there's about a 15 minute making of, um, yeah, 15 minute making of Mortal Kombat, which is here on YouTube. Um, but you know, that this is where it's sourced from, is from this here, which is very cool. But, uh, right off the bat, I like this for what it is. I just rewatched it, I had not seen this in so long. Um, but um, I do like it for what it is. It's it, it's rated PG. I know the the marketing um, because there's a a trailer for this on the Mortal Kombat VHS that I have. The marketing really focused on that. It's rated PG. It's for the whole family. Um, you know, this is when because of the movie they were trying to market Mortal Kombat to a broader audience instead of just the video game people. Because um, a year after this came out, in 1996, we had the Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm series on the USA Network, which I will be reviewing a couple videos down the road here. Um, but, yeah, this is when Mortal Kombat was trying to uh, make as much money as possible, I guess, and branch out and reach different audiences. Um, I know retrospectively, people kind of look down upon this stuff. Um, I liked it for what it is. I like this for what it is. The Defenders of the Realm cartoon, I remember watching when I was a kid. Um, I liked that for what it is. You know to each his own. Um, it's not perfect. It's not great. Uh, this is definitely not perfect or great, but I like it for what it is. You know, that's just my opinion. But basically, this is kind of an alternate version of the movie, so to speak. Um, the gist of this is uh, Liu Kang, Sonya, and Johnny Cage are on the boat to go to Outworld, and Raiden shows up, explains to them what's going on, they deal with Sang Shang Tsung, they deal with Scorpion and Sub-Zero, like they did in the movie, they get to the island, they learn a little bit more, it ends with, you know, them saying it, it has begun, Mortal Kombat has begun, and that's it. Um, yeah, so this is like a alternate family-friendly version, I guess, of the movie. Um, and what's really cool about this is it's a mix of animation. You have 2D animation, you have CGI, and you have shell shaded, cell shaded animation. She shore, seashells by the she shore. Um, you have cell shaded animation in it as well. So it's a it's a nice little experiment in that. Now, granted, again, this was 1995. 
CGI was basically brand new. The CGI isn't perfect, but I can give it the pass. Again, it's 1995. What they were trying to do was something different and something more marketable. Okay, I appreciate the effort, you know. Um, because what's really cool is all the fight scenes are done, as you can see in the back here, are all done in the CG format, which is pretty cool. The only fight that's not is um, towards the end of it, there's a fight between Baraka. It's like these army of Barakas and the three main characters. That is the only one. And then in the, actually in the beginning, um, they get in a little tussle with Scorpion and Sub-Zero on the boat, much like in the film. And that is done in the traditional 2D animation as well. So, uh, pun intended, there's two 2D fights in the film. Uh, they're at the beginning, at the end. The other ones, which are mostly told in flashback, are all done in CG. Um, but again, as a, a fan of animation, it's a nice way to kind of blend it all together. It looks pretty cool at least in my opinion. Um, there's a good voice cast. Uh, Jeff Bennett, he's a big-time voice actor. He's been in many different cartoons over the years. Uh, he does the voice of Johnny Cage. Uh, Jim Cummings, Tigger himself, does the voice of Shang Tsung and Sub-Zero, which is pretty cool. Um, and, the other vo and then uh, Sonya is voiced by Jennifer Hale, she did the Black Cat on the 1990s Spider-Man cartoon. Um, so there's a pretty good voice cast in here. They definitely, you know, kind of went to the cream of the crop at the time in terms of voice actors to get them to portray these characters. So that is interesting as well. Um, but the plot, I mean, it's basically just kind of dumbed down from the movie. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, they do get a little more into the history and the backstory of the Mortal Kombat tournament. Um, Kung Lao was in it. He gets his ass kicked by Goro. Um, you know, that kind of thing. But it's pretty much the same thing. And what is cool is for the CG fight scenes, they actually did motion capture. So they hired legitimate martial artists to do the fight scenes for motion capture and then animate them using CGI. So, you know, not bad at all. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, this came out, this VHS originally, and Laserdisc, came out right before uh, the movie did because there's a preview for the movie on this tape. For some reason, there's also a preview for National Lampoon's uh, Senior Trip, which was an R-rated film. I never understood that. It's weird how back in the VHS days, how they would market some of the trailers on these tapes, especially ones like this that are supposed to be for a family audience. And yeah, it's kind of weird how they would do that back in the day. The good old days of VHS. Um, but, and the way it ends, it does say, um, it's not like to be continued, but it's like, you know, go see Mortal Kombat the movie um, coming soon, you know, so that is in there. And then it ends with like a little profile of the fighters, which I will show, because the laser disc actually took advantage of the artwork and did some more, because the, again, the VHS is very, very basic, like most VHS. Um, on here, it says, uh, go one step beyond virtual reality with 3D animation like you've never seen it. Again, this was the 90s, when everybody was obsessed with VR, so there you go. Um, and it, it, it does have I still have the coupon book with it, so there you go. Um, and then here's a little thing, you know, extended expiration dates. Um, you know, free Mortal Kombat watch and uh, gloves until 1996. Well, that was 25 years ago. I doubt I'll be able to get them. Um, but yeah, here's the front of the coupon book, and then the back has an ad for Mortal Kombat 2. Which is weird, because when this came out, Mortal Kombat 3 was in the arcades. So it's kind of, again, odd how um, they chose to do that. But we've got the uh, the Mortal Kombat watch and uh, savings on the uh, Mortal Kombat tour. The live tour, which was going on around that time. Um, I did not see that, but then we have a 
uh, Mortal Kombat T-shirt and Mortal Kombat 2 control uh, pad, um, which you can use for Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm sure you can find all this stuff on eBay. And then we have a little uh, mail away for the Mortal Kombat fan club, which was called the Combat Club, and then a uh, subscription for GamePro Magazine, which I proudly was subscribed to when I was a kid. Um, I did have one of the Mortal Kombat issues, but I don't know what happened to it. Um, we've got Mortal Kombat Game Gloves, which is pretty cool. And then last but not least, uh, we have uh, a Mortal Kombat Pog, uh, the Slammer for the Pog, which is pretty cool. So yeah, um, still have the original uh, coupon book for this. My brother actually got me this VHS many years ago. Um, where I used to live, not the apartment, but the house, the old house that I used to live, uh, uh, up the street was a family dollar. And my brother actually got me this tape for my birthday or something, um, which is very cool. But yeah, I do remember like renting this from the video store when I was a kid because, again, there's a preview for it before the Mortal Kombat movie on VHS. And I was like, oh, that always looked cool. Um, as a kid, and uh, yeah, I remember renting this as a kid, and uh, still have my VHS. It's in pretty good shape. It's got some normal wear and tear on it. I just watched it. It still plays fine. Um, and then again, yeah, there's a making of the movie in here, which is about 15 minutes. Again, it's here on YouTube for those that are curious. And then in addition to that, um, I also have the uh, laser disc. Here, which is very cool. Got this a couple of years ago, really cheap. Um, wanted to get it, but I really, again, really like how they took advantage of the laser disc size and did some really nice artwork. That was kind of the bonus for it, uh, at least for me. Unfortunately, the seams are all busted. All three of the seams on here are busted, so they probably didn't. Whoever the previous owner was probably didn't take care of it. Um, but yeah, but again, there's a, a profile for each of the characters, which is featured in the video, in the, in, the, in the movie, which is pretty cool. And then, of course, chapter stop. And again, they were really harping on that PG rating because it says it right there. Um, and we get one different shot, which is that uh, on the back because the other two are the same. And then on the VHS, instead of this one, you got another shot from that. The uh, Scorpion Sub Zero CGI fight, um, and this laser disc plays fine. It's only one side. Uh, there's nothing on the flip side of the laser disc. It's only on side one because it's less than an hour um, on here, so you could fit it all on one side. And again, like I said, it's for some reason just the animated portion is on the Blu-ray for Mortal Kombat. The making of, for some reason, they didn't put on just fucking laziness of course um way to go warner brothers but what what else is new right but yeah i mean at the end of the day you know i do like this for what it is i know it's kind of universally panned like most of the mortal Kombat multimedia out there apart from really the original well now people are shitting on the original movie so i guess everything is universally panned if it came out more than five years ago but whatever um you know, unfortunately, the majority of the Mortal Kombat multimedia did, is not very well received. But I like it for what it is. That's just my personal opinion. And again, I figured since the new movie's coming out, Matt sent in the paid request for the commentary for Annihilation. Might as well talk about some other Mortal Kombat stuff and have some fun. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, this is something I put in every once in a while just to kind of rewatch it. And again, it's not to me, it's not bad. It's a harmless little PG-rated, you know, alternate animated version of the movie. Try saying that five times fast. And I like it for what it is. Again, it's not something I watch, you know, once a month or anything to the extent of that. It's something I put on every once in a while just to kind of go back and look at it and have a little bit of fun. And that's all it is to me. But anyway... Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of Mortal Kombat for the journey.
the journey began. I I thought it was something else for some reason. I had a moment, but it is indeed the journey begins. But this is cool, you know, a cool little uh, piece of nostalgia, which I hate that word um, for anyone that's a Mortal Kombat fan. But anyway, so next up, before I get into the Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm series, I am going to review. Mortal Kombat Scorpion's Revenge. Now, I have never seen this before. This will be the first time I check it out, and I'm really looking forward to it. So until then, as always, thank you guys for watching. Take care, and we'll talk soon. See you.